Hi everyone and welcome to Squirrel Pie Productions. My name is Tommy. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 70 of my podcast. Thank you so much for being here. If you're a new viewer, welcome. And if you are a returning viewer, a big welcome back. Today's a really beautiful, sunny and bright and warm Thursday in March here on the Northern California coast where I'm coming to you from. We have a Ravelry group for this podcast. If you would like to go join that, that is the place to be for giveaway stuff, knit along stuff, all kinds of other fun things. Check it out if you haven't yet. I would love to see you there. And what I am wearing today is a sweater and a tunic that I have made. So the sweater is a Hohi Locatelli pattern. It is even flow, knit out of Blue Moon Fiber Arts socks that rock medium weight in the bittersweet colorway. This is pretty much my favorite knitting pattern I have ever made. It's my favorite sweater I've ever made. I wear it almost every day and I love it. <laughs> um, and then the tunic that I'm wearing underneath is a sewing finished object, something I made yesterday, and I'm pretty excited about it. So I'm gonna talk about that now uh, instead of after knitting like I normally would. So if you're not interested in sewing, I totally get it. I'm gonna put a time thing right here so that you'll know where to skip to if you wanna skip sewing. But this sewing FO that I made is the Uniform Tunic by Grand Lane Studio. And I'm gonna show you. So, in case you're interested, here's the sweater. It's got the slip stitch pattern on the back, and it's an open front long cardigan. It's my favorite. Okay, so the tunic. Here it is. It has got pockets and it's a long tunic so <laughs> um, there's a bunch of different versions of this thing I did the sleeveless one with the v-neck and that's pretty much it it's the length of it's just past my butt which is kind of my favorite length for tops tunics is my favorite So that's that view of it. <laughs> um, let me show you the pattern itself and then I'll talk a little bit about what I used and how I did it and stuff like that. So it's the Uniform Tunic by Greenline Studio and it came as a collaboration between Greenline Studio and Matter in the Uniform Knit and Sew collection or whatever. So what this is, is a book. I'm not sure if you can get it on digitally as well, but I have the book version. It comes with a sewing pattern for this and a knitting pattern for this cardigan. The thing about both of these things though, is that there's a lot of variations. They're both mix and match with all of the elements. So the tunic that I made, here are the two views. And all of the elements from each view can be mixed and matched. So I mostly did view A, but I used the neckline from view B. And the cardigan pretty much works the same way. There's a lot of different elements. There's options for neckband style, pockets, body shaping, sleeve variables. Uh, so there's a bunch of different views for that too and they're all mix and match and there's like three pages of this. So this is a pretty neat book. Also the cardigan comes in fingering weight and worsted weight pattern instructions. And here's some of the variations on both of them. So I've had this book for a little while and I finally just made the tunic yesterday. I've been wanting to make clothes again for so long, sewing wise, and I haven't because I'm not the biggest fan of sewing, but I really, I'm, I'm a product sewist. I, I don't really enjoy the process, but I really, really, really want the clothes. So I finally just did it yesterday and it was great. And I'm really happy I did it. I think it's hopefully gonna get my mojo back because I have a couple other patterns that I wanna make as well. 
Um, I don't have a great fabric stash. I have purchased fabrics in the past uh, for garments and in my classic style, I purchase as little as I possibly can because I don't want to over purchase because I don't want to waste money. Uh, and so a lot of the stuff I have in my stash are like fabrics of a yard and a half. And where I thought I was going to make like a skirt or like a little top or something. And for all the things I want to make right now, I need at least two yards for. So this pattern called for a little over two yards, but I only had two yards. And I figured it'd work fine anyway, because that's how I roll. And it did. I had like kind of a bunch of extra fabric left. So I got away with this with two yards and I could have even had less. Uh, so maybe I could make this with yarn and a half. Um, so the fabric that I used is a cotton wall and I probably said that really stupid, but I <laughs> V-O-I-L-E. It's a really lightweight cotton and I thought it'd be really good for garments because of how lightweight it was because I equated that with drape, but I don't necessarily think that's true anymore after making this. Um, the drape is still pretty similar to quilting cotton. It's just thinner. So I think next time, I've been slowly experimenting with different kinds of fabrics for garments, um, trying to find like a good drapey like dress tunic kind of easy to move in kind of fabric. And uh, I had high hopes for voile, but I don't know, I think I'm gonna move on to something else. I've heard rayon is really nice, but I feel like there's a lot of different types of rayon, so I don't know. I shop online for fabric, so who knows. Anyway, I made this tunic in a couple different sessions. I sat down and I traced out the pattern because the pattern comes um, double-sided, printed out on paper in this book, so you can't actually cut out the pattern pieces. You have to trace it and then cut them out which uh, was a little bit of a thumbs down for me because I just hate doing stuff like that. I think it's tedious. But anyway, I did it. <laughs> and uh, I did all that in, in bits and pieces throughout a day. And then I cut out the fabric the next day. And then yesterday, I finally sewed all the pieces together. And it was really easy. It was really simple. This is a super, super easy pattern. And... I did make a whole bunch of mistakes. The first big mistake that I made was the front bodice piece. You kind of, it's got bust darts. So if you are a sewist, you might know what that looks like in a pattern piece, but just in case you don't. So that's what your piece is supposed to look like. And this thing right here is supposed to be like, that's all fabric as well. This is one big piece of fabric. I read my pattern piece wrong and I omitted this. So I actually cut that out of my pattern piece. Not only of my pattern piece, but of my fabric. And I didn't notice until I went to sew it and realized I, it took me a minute to realize why I was confused by what I was supposed to do. And it's because I cut the thing out wrong. <laughs> So I essentially cut my fabric on the line that I'm supposed to sew. So I left myself zero, what do you call it? What's that word? Not solid. Seam allowance. I left myself zero seam allowance. <laughs> so <laughs> I just fudged it and I created a seam allowance into the fabric piece that I had of like a sixteenth of an inch, which is super not safe. But it was really janky at a really bad start to the thing and I just like sewed over it a bunch of times. It was it was a disaster, but I didn't care. I pushed forward. I didn't have an, enough fabric left to cut out another piece. So um, I just went with it and it was fine. I, I have a really small bust anyway. So making that line, making that part 
have less fabric was fine for me. So that worked out, but it was definitely really sloppy. <laughs> and, um, but it's fine. The bus starts worked out just fine. I definitely didn't do a very good job at the end where it's supposed to be kind of smooth. They're definitely kind of wrinkled right there, but that's okay. Um, the pockets were really easy to do. I really like them. They're like these like kind of open, I don't know, apron style pockets, which are really cool. Um, the neckline was something else that I totally fudged. Uh, so it's a V-neck, which you can see is like super sloppy the way I did it, but oh well. Uh, the interfacing, you do that at the very end and there was like five lines of instructions on how to do the interfacing and how to sew it and how to finish it. And by the end, I was just like so over it that I kind of just skipped over the instructions and did my own thing, which worked fine. It pretty much meant I just, I sewed it down and then I pinked the edges off instead of whatever finishing they wanted me to do. That worked for me. I also misread the instructions on how to finish the armholes. So I have just some raw edging right there, which, oh well. <laughs> That's how I sew. Every, every garment I make is like this. Also, when I was pinking the interfacing or the facing for the neckline, I uh, cut through the shirt itself, of course. So. <laughs> I patched it <laughs> and that is I think right where is it it's back here somewhere I think it's right here yeah I cut through right there so I just put a little patch of my facing with the interfacing on it underneath and just really sloppily put it in my sewing machine and like sewed 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 so I really did it Kind of a sloppy job just mending that hole, but like I said, at the end I was over it and I want it to be done and that was good enough for me. So, <laughs> this is my uniform tunic. Will I make another one? I don't know. I've been on this search for like good garment fabric. I've also been on the search for kind of my perfect top tunic dress thing that I kind of want as like a uniform um, and I don't think this one's quite it. I don't know if I'll make it again. We'll see. I have a couple other patterns that I want to try. I have the Metamorphic pattern by So Liberated which a bunch of people have been doing right now um, and I feel like that one can go either way. I feel like it looks really fantastic on the model of the like pattern picture and that's what inspired me to get it but I've seen people make it too and it it's it definitely comes out a little potato sacky sometimes so I'm scared of that <laughs> but um I also got I don't remember the and this I don't know it's the I'll put it here it's another celebrated pattern and it's a stretch jersey uh, like skater dress kind of and so I want to make that as well. We'll see though. I don't know. I kind of got excited about sewing in making this because it was really easy. It was super simple to construct. But I also don't really have enough of any fabrics to make any of the patterns that I want to make right now. So we'll see. I am really, really happy with this tunic. And um, the fabric is this kind of turquoise flowery pattern and it's nice I don't love it it's a little pastel blue for me which I just it, it isn't my favorite I don't know why I bought it who knows but I am overall super happy with this thing and I hope to be sewing more in the future okay moving on to some knitting. I have a lot of stuff. So I cast on a couple new projects. I went to Stitches West two weeks ago, which was amazing. And I will talk a little bit more about that at the end. But um, yeah, I was inspired to cast on some new stuff. 
So let's show you what I've been working on. Uh, the first thing is the project that I took with me two stitches to work on, and they are living in this uprooted fibers bag. It's a really cool snap bag, and I really like it. These are my Aquarian socks. And the yarn that I'm using is Moonstone Dye Works, which is my yarn in the Aquarian colorway. This is my BFL sock base. And I am pretty far along on them. I did a 64 stitch cast on for the cuff, two by two ribbing. I'm working them up on size zero needles, doing a magic loop. And I'm probably gonna work another inch or two possibly on the leg. I like a pretty long leg on my socks before I start the heel flap and gusset. And I really, really like these. Um, I am knitting these for the Pisces season knit along. I know, Aquarian Pisces. Are they rivals? Probably not. <laughs> Pisces season knit along uh, that is being hosted in the Quirky Monday Craft Cast podcast by Kalisha. And they're perfect. They're greens and kind of aqua teals with some kind of mustardy golden sort of pops. And that's it. That's pretty much what I worked on while I was there. It was about this much. <laughs> and uh, they are super fun. I love the sound of plastic snaps. So this next project that I have cast on is a new project and it's really special. It is all made up of elements that have been gifted to me by friends and I just love it so much. So the project is living in my new project bag, which was made for me by my friend Un Yang, who I finally got to meet in person when I went down to Stitches and it was just so amazing to meet you, Un Young. I had such a good time. And she made me this project bag, which is amazing because it's hot pink and it has black hats wearing gold bow ties. Uh, she does not have a shop where she sells bags, unfortunately, so you cannot get one of these. But one of you does have one of her bags because she donated a, ba donated a bag to the podcast a long time ago for a giveaway. So if that's you, the lucky one that has that, I think it was, had glow in the dark ghosts on it. That's one. Anyway, so the project that I'm working on is this right here. This is the start of a manhood, which is a pattern by Cindy, Little, Cindy DeLong, who I also got to meet at Stitches. And it was just such a pleasure to meet you and hang out with you and the whole group. And she designed this pattern and gifted it to me. It's also called the Resistor Cowl on Ravelry. It, you can find it under both names and I believe it's the same pattern. And so pretty much what it, what it is is a long cowl. So it's the kind that you can like loop around and it has a hood attached to it. And I have this much done so far. So it's knit in the round up. The yarn that I'm using is this beautiful stuff. This is West Yorkshire Spinners, the Croft, which was gifted to me by my friend Carrie who lives in Oregon. And I love this yarn so much. When it arrived, I was so excited. It's beautiful yarn. It's 100% wool. I think it's non-superwash Shetland. I could be wrong about that though. But um, you can find it on the Wooly Thistle. I have found it there before. And it is in the colorways Klausta and Merrifield. I think that's right. And it's an arrow weight yarn. The pattern calls for worsted weight yarn held doubled. So I'm doing it a little thicker. This yarn is so soft. Oh my. It's wonderful. So the bag, the pattern, and the yarn were all so wonderfully and kindly gifted to me by friends. And I just, this project is wonderful. I love it so much. I am knitting this cowl on the recommended needle size, which US, is a US size 10. And it's knit in seed stitch. 
and I love how the colors are playing so far. One of the skeins is like a really dark gray and hot pink. And then the other one is a much lighter gray and like purple. And I just think they're working up so nice together. I love it. So this is an awesome pattern. It's really easy to, um, I will link to it in the show notes and love it. Love it. My next project is my Guthrie. This is my sticking Guthrie, as I like to call it, living in my fat squirrel project bag. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Remember how last week I said I was kind of getting sick of it? I'm still kind of getting sick of it, but I'm almost done. I'm so close. So, here it is. The body is still done, just like it was last week. And now I have most of a sleeve. <gasps> what? Look at this sleeve. Isn't it beautiful? I just love it. So, right now I am at a point where the pattern says that I'm done with the sleeve. At least the patterning part. But I want long sleeves because the pattern is written originally for like three quarter sleeves or something like that. Um, but I'm doing long sleeves. One of the pattern photo versions, the sample, one of the samples <laughs> has long sleeves and that's what I want to do. Uh, so what I'm doing is it was supposed to end right here. I'm taking this section and adding another one of those at the end. Uh, in the instructions for the pattern, she says the way to lengthen the sleeves is to repeat this section, but the sample that she knit has it repeated like right afterwards. So I didn't do that because I didn't. <laughs> so now I'm just adding it at the end. I kind of debated whether I wanted to add another one of this section or this section because I could have done either, uh, but I decided it would look cool to have like the alternating section. So that's what I'm doing. I just started another section of these things. And last episode, I was complaining about the needles. Well, I was complaining about knitting the sleeve and how I didn't like it. And I was blaming the needles. And a few people left kind of comments about that, like how it probably is the needles, because you know, some people don't like this kind of needles these kinds of needles. Um, somebody else suggested DPNs, which like to me, I was like, oh yeah, there's DPNs. I never use them, so I never think about them. Somebody else though suggested, and this one really resonated with me. I was like but way back here when I was complaining about it. And they said, just keep knitting on the sleeve because a lot of times once you get some of the sleeve actually done and you get some length built up, it gets a lot easier in terms of rotating the sweater. And they were totally right. That's exactly what happened. I still don't love knitting the sleeves, but it's so much better now that I have some length behind me and it's just much less awkward. So I'm totally fine with it now. I still really want to be done. It's going by pretty fast, but um, I'm still just kind of over it. But anyway, uh, the way that it had you do it which is really common, is you picked up your stitches that were on hold for the armholes, you cast on some stitches, you had some bound off stitches down here. So pretty much as you're knitting your sleeve, you have a big hole in your underarm and at the end you're supposed to go back and seam it. I started getting nervous because this yarn is so fragile. I am, by the way, using Plotulopi, which is by Iztex, and it's an unspun Icelandic wool that comes in plates. It's called Plotulopi and it's wonderful. I love it. I am still on the first cake of the pink. I bought three cakes of this stuff. I'm gonna have so much left over. And I'm on the second cake of the black. Anyway, it was making me nervous because this yarn is really fragile. So I had this big hole that had like bound off stitches, cast on stitches, which were fine. But then the in-between parts, like the edges of that kept getting, you know, stretched out. So I was afraid it was going to break. So I just went ahead and seamed it now. Um, 
and I did a horizontal mattress stitch. So that's what that looks like. And I initially, dumb me, thought I would do it with the yarn itself. And I was like, I'll just hold it double and I'll seam it that way in mattress stitch. Even though everybody says you're not supposed to do that with really fragile yarn, I was like, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. It wasn't fine. I broke it like three times before I finally decided to try something else because of course it was gonna break. So I went in my scrap stash and found some black yarn, which is probably the only other black yarn I've ever had. I think this might be Cascade 220, but I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure I had this left over from a hat I knit a friend a long time ago, but I don't know exactly what it is. Uh, but it's like a light worsted. It worked fine. And so I got that done. That's awesome. So now all I have left is like a sleeve and a half to do. And sticking. And then I'm done. And then I, well, then I have to knit the bun band. And then I'm done. So. Almost. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Getting there. Okay. My last knitted project is a new cast on. And it's living in another fat squirrel bag. So this is the Calligraphy Guardian by Hannah Fettig, which is a pattern I've been wanting to knit for a very long time. And I am using some yarn that I bought at Stitches. So at Stitches, I bought a sweater's quantity of Abundant Earth Fiber Verdant in Dark Gray. And it's very lovely, very lovely. It is 80% U.S. Merino, 20% U.S. Rambouillet. And it's a worsted weight, non-superwash, non -super natural color yarn. It's beautiful. It's really beautiful. Abundant Earth Fiber is on Whidbey Island, which is in Washington, I think. Pretty sure it's in Washington, right? Why do I say stuff? It's in Washington. Say it with confidence. <laughs> and they have their own mill. I can't remember if they have their own sheep. But it's really cool. I like what they do. And they had a booth at Stitches West and it was one of the booths that I kept going back to and like, I just needed something from them. And it was between this and their fingering weight, I think. And I went with this. So I bought five skeins of this yarn. It's very soft, it's very squishy. It's wonderful, I love it. And I'm gonna give you another close up because it's clear. It's got these lighter bits to it. Oh, I just love it. Okay, so I got five skeins of that, caked up this one. I did two swatches because I wasn't quite sure what pattern I wanted. So I swatched with two different needle sizes so that I could look on Ravelry by gauge and choose a pattern from that. I went with the US size six needles, which got me the gauge for the calligraphy cardigan. So I started it. What I have here, I think up until about this point, are both my swatches that I ripped out reballed and started the sweater with because something that is kind of effed about this pattern in my opinion <laughs> is that on Ravelry it tells you you need I think like 1350 yards of worsted weight yarn or DK. Is this DK or worsted? DK. I kept saying worsted. It's DK. This yarn is DK. The pattern calls for DK blah blah blah. So it calls for like 1350 yards of DK. I have 1250 yards. And of course, you know me, I'm like, it's fine. I can make that work, I'm sure. It'll be fine. Well, okay, so I bought the pattern. I didn't only buy the pattern, I bought the whole book, which is Home and Away. And when I got to the actual pattern and read the, the intro with all the info on it, the book says I need 1,575 yards. And I was like, 
well, that sucks. <laughs> So I don't know which one is correct. Um, I mean, probably in reality, neither is like correct, correct, because everybody uses a little bit of different yardage, but that's a big difference to put on the Ravelry pattern page versus on the pattern itself. That's a big difference. So I was bummed, but by that point, I wasn't like gonna not knit it because I just bought the book. And I still want, I want the sweater. I just don't know if I have a teeny bit less yardage than I'm supposed to, or like a whole skein's worth less yardage than I'm supposed to. So I was a little miffed about that. But whatever. I'm, oh well. We'll see when I get to the end. I might have to buy another skein, which I can do. I looked on the website. I might have to figure something else out. I don't know. But I started it and so far it is just two by two ribbing. And this is going to be the collar. So it's going to be like that. And it's a really simple stockinette raglan cardigan. Super straightforward. And I'm excited about it. I love this yarn. I think it's going to be a beautiful sweater. And I hope I have enough yarn. <laughs> and I am knitting this cardigan for the Cozy Sweater Knit Along being hosted by Stacy of Stress Knits, where you can knit any sweater that is that has positive ease. So yeah. Okay, I have one more thing that is not knitting. I have still been working on my weaving, which is living in my Bull and Vine Yarns tote bag. And I will just show you real quick because I did have some progress, but not a whole, whole lot. So this is where I am at. So I'm doing a round weaving. If you can see, it's my first time weaving because look at my warp threads. Aren't they beautiful? I uh, warped directly onto this metal frame that I intend to use as the final products frame. I'm going to hang it on the wall. And... That's what I have so far. It looks almost exactly the same as it did last time, only it's bigger. And here's the ball I'm working with. Here is the yarn I'm using. So this is some hand spun. It is Spunky Eclectic Fin in the Aquarium colorway. I am also making this for the Pisces Season Make Along. And I like it a lot so far still. For more details about how I did this, which is really not that detailed at all, see the last episode, that's where I go over all the details. Um, but it's pretty much a plain weaving done in the round. YouTube it, there's a lot of really cool YouTube videos about round weaving. And that is that. Next I'm going to do a quick shop update segment before I move on to my favorites where I will talk about Stitches West. So this week in the shop, I have added two colorways. Um, they are both in the shop right now. The first, I went a little crazy on my non-superwash base because after going to stitches and just being drawn to all the natural non-superwash yarns, I wanted to play more with my non-superwash base. So I dyed a bunch of Belladonna on my natural merino, which is 100% Organic non-superwash Falkland Merino. And so this is Belladonna on that base. I also have a little bit of Belladonna on my Merino single. And then the other colorway I have in the shop right now is my new colorway and it's called Mad Sweeney. And this kind of unintentionally ended up a St. Patrick's Day colorway because it's very green <laughs> and um, it reminded me of this image of Mad Sweeney, who's a character from American Gods, which is like one of my favorite Neil Gaiman novels. It's also a television show. Mad Sweeney is the leprechaun and he's great. So this is Mad Sweeney, our St. Patrick's Day colorway. And that's it. Those two are in the shop right now. Um, I have a bunch of skeins of both of them on some different bases. So 
check that out if you are interested at moonstonedieworks.com. And if you haven't signed up for the newsletter yet, do so because you can get 10% off any order through the newsletter. Okay, on to stitches. So two weeks ago, I went to Stitches West. I drove down to Santa Clara, California, which took me about seven hours. It was a long drive. It was a long drive. I had a really great Airbnb. It was tiny and cozy and wonderful, and the kitchen was stocked with cup of noodles and instant oatmeal and coffee, which was... Um, so I went to Stitches on Saturday morning and pretty much spent much of the day there wandering around the marketplace, and um, it was so great. It was so great. I've never gone to Stitches before and had the entire day to spend at the marketplace. I usually go much more quickly than that. So I kind of did what I usually do and I did my rounds. I went and looked at like every single booth throughout the whole venue and then made a note of everything I might want and then I went back to my Airbnb for lunch, thought about it, and then I went back and bought everything. So let me show you what I got. And so the first thing that I got was that sweater's quantity of Abundant Earth Fibers. And that was, I think, the very first thing that I bought. And I love it. Um, I then got some of this Cormo by Elemental Effects, which I had never heard of before, but they had some of this yarn at the Starlight Knitting Society booth, which is another booth that I went back to over and over again. <laughs> I was really drawn to this yarn and I just kept going back to like look at it and like be like, do I wanna buy it? Do I wanna buy it? Do I wanna buy it? I finally bought it. Um, and they were amazing at that booth. <laughs> I, um, I ended up buying two skeins and then regretted not getting these two skeins so I went back and I was like hey can I trade and they were like super cool and they said yes so I got I ended up getting the sport weight in the cypress colorway so this is 100% cormo and it's in this really great forest green color and it's it's a sport weight yarn and I have two skeins now I don't nece I want to do a sweater uh, I don't necessarily think this is enough for a sweater. It says it's 400 yards, but it said it's 400 yards stretched. So I think in reality, it's a little less than 400 yards. But I have some Imperial yarn in my stash in like a sage color and like an oatmeal grayish kind of color. They're both sport weight. And I think I could use them with this for some kind of, for something, for some sweater, like a color block sweater or something. Uh, I did find, I've been searching Ravelry for a pattern for this. And I found, I think my favorite so far is the Grayson by Laura Ayler. And that's a color block sweater. So I might consider doing that. I'm really tempted to just swatch with this like already <laughs> and see what I can get a little more accurately based on what gauge I get. Um, I'm also thinking about doing a Ramona light. Uh, Ramona is another cardigan that I have knit. Actually, it's the one I wore to stitches. And that's knit in worsted weight yarn. But she has a light version of sport weight. So, I don't know. But this is really wonderful and squishy. I love Cormo a lot. And it's a really bouncy, high twist, non super wash yarn and it's beautiful. So I got two skeins of this at Starlight Knitting Society. I also got this tote bag which a friend of mine that I met later in the day went back and got for me so thank you. <laughs> um, I also went to the Farmer's Daughter Fiber booth and picked up these two half skeins and this is Pushkin, which is 100% Montana and Wyoming Rambouillet. And this is their mini, so it's 50 grams each. I thought these two colors looked really good together, even though I feel like they look a little weird together. This is like a pinkish gray. And um, this is a really deep 
burnt kind of golden color and I think they're really cool and mittens maybe I doubt that I doubt that they would be enough for socks but I was thinking these would be really cool like color work thick socks but I don't think there's enough so I'm hoping there's enough for mittens but that's what I got at Farmer's Daughter Fibers. Their booth was really great. They, of course, have the I Willy Love Knitting pins with Willie Nelson wearing a Tecumseh, I think. Which was so tempting. So tempting. But I don't know. The pins were expensive. And I don't want to spend my money on pins rather than this yarn. So, so I got that at Farmer's Daughter fibers. I also got, so I went to the Nerdbird Makery booth and I follow Nerdbird Makery on Instagram and she, leading up to stitches, I kept seeing her stuff on her Instagram feed and I was so excited to visit her booth. And I went and I almost got a t-shirt. I wanted a t-shirt so bad, but I didn't just because t-shirts and me are not great friends right now. So I didn't. But I got these two pins that's a bowl of yarn with needles, like ramen with chopsticks. And then this one is a little hammer and it says nailed it. And then I also got a sticker set. I love this image. It says baller in the style of a ball jar. And then we've got Follow Your Bliss. And nevertheless, she knitted. So her booth was really, really cool. And she was also a very wonderful and nice person. I also got this little notebook from Abundant Earth Fiber that they gave me. Just a little blank notebook with like some info in it. So that's everything I bought. I feel like I did pretty good. I still spent a lot of money. Like that's not that much yarn, but it was a lot. <laughs> but um, I stayed pretty much within my budget that I was allowing myself. And I'm really, really excited about what I got. Uh, two sweaters quantity, well one and a half sweaters quantities of some really beautiful natural non-superwash yarn and then two little kind of mini mitten kit thing again non-superwash kind of natural yarn and that's just really what i was drawn to with stitches was all of the kind of more farm yarns and there was a lot of really nice stuff there was so much stuff that i did not get that i wanted so bad but you know you can't get everything. So there was a lot that I didn't get, but there were so many great booths there. So many great makers and sellers and farmers and dyers and so much good wool. So much good wool. So I had a great time. I, I, I met some fantastic people and I have some regrets about missing some social things. So I was told by a couple of people about like a podcaster slash Ravelry meetup that I didn't know about before like actually being there. And I tried to go to that, but I went to the wrong place and didn't see anybody. So I assumed I had missed it because I went kind of late. And as I was leaving, like leaving, leaving for the day and not coming back, I walked right through where I'm pretty sure it really was. So that was such a bummer. <laughs> I really, really wanted to go to this meetup. Um, some people that I knew who were going to be there that I wanted to meet, I totally missed because I didn't go because I'm dumb and I went to the wrong spot. But oh well. Next year, I know where it is now. Maybe I'll go. So that, that was a bummer. I really, really wanted to go meet up with some people. Um, and it was where the bar is. Like, I had no idea this whole bar area was even there. I've never seen it before. All the years I've been going to Stitches, I've never seen this area that's like right there. And there's this big, beautiful bar out of it with a bunch of couches and it looks amazing and cozy. And of course, I missed out on that. But anyway, 
I did meet some really wonderful people though. Um, I ran into my friend Jillian from the Good Witch Knits podcast and chatted with her for a minute. And then later on uh, in the marketplace, towards the end, I met Cindy and Brenda and Brenda and Cynthia. <laughs> and I hung out with those uh, wonderful people for pretty much the whole rest of the time. Um, they were amazing. You guys are amazing and I love you. And thank you for letting me hang out with you. We went to dinner after the market to a Chinese restaurant with really amazing pork noodles. We all got the same thing. It was really good. And it was so amazing and fun to meet you guys and hang out with you. And, um, and then I, after that, I went back to my place and knit and watched cartoons and it was amazing. And then the next day on my way out of town, I met up with my friend Un Young at the yarn shop that she works in in Santa Rosa. And that was just wonderful. I've known Un Young through this podcast for like a couple years now since I pretty much started podcasting, I think. And um, she's been such an awesome person and it was so wonderful to meet her. It was so good to meet you, and Young. I had such a good time hanging out with you. I wish we lived closer because that would be great. But anyway, this is the yarn shop that she works at. It's Castaway in Santa Rosa, and it was a really beautiful shop. It was like really beautiful, lots of brick and wood. And, oh, I like that. Um, and she, of course, sent me home with some gifts, which was amazing. Um, so that project bag, the pink one with the cats on it, she made for me. And she also gave me this little drawstring canvas bag with Olive, who is the yarn shop's, I don't know, shop dog maybe? I don't know, but she's adorable. She's a, what is, is that a French bulldog? I don't know, anyway. She wasn't there, so I didn't get to meet her, but I did see her pictures on Instagram and she's super cute. And uh, so I just kind of hung around in Santa Rosa with her for like an hour or so, and then I drove home. And I was home in time on Sunday to hang out with Lucy and Colin before Lucy went to bed. And it was so much fun. And it was just a really great trip. I had such a good time. I'm really happy with what I came home with. I'm really excited about the people that I got to meet and hang out with and spend time with. And that's like exactly what I wanted out of this trip was to hang out with some people. And like I said, I wish I would have made it to a stupid meetup. Not stupid. Stupid because I didn't get to go. <laughs> um, I wish I would have been able to go to it, but like I said, next year I know where it's going to be. So I'm going. Um, that, oh, okay. And then I came home and I got this in the mail. So this is Desert Vista Dye Works. And this is the I Love Lucy colorway. Isn't that perfect and amazing. So Desert Vista Dye Works is a classic self-striping dyer and if you don't know this about them already, in their Ravelry group they have a monthly contest. So they give you a prompt, you post a picture based on that prompt, and they pick a few of those pictures for color inspirations for the following months, like colorway of the month or whatever. And you can enter every single month if you want and if your picture gets picked you get a free skein of that yarn that she dyes based on your picture and i used to enter this thing every single month like years ago and i haven't entered it for years like i haven't even thought about it for years and then in the past few episodes recently of the Knit Girls podcast, Laura had been bringing it up because one of hers got picked and she was knitting with it, with the yarn that she got. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to go check it out and see what's up with that. And the day that I went to check out the thread happened to be the day that the next contest had gone up. So it was favorite TV shows. And so I put up a few entries. One was I Love Lucy. One was Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and one was Detectorists, and I Love Lucy won. So I won the skein of yarn, and I'm so excited. I'm extra excited because I'm all out of self-striping sock yarn, and so now I have another self-striping sock yarn skein. I have like three socks on the needles right now, but after those are done, I'm totally casting this on. I'm so excited. It's beautiful, and I love it. Okay, and that's it.
that's everything. There was a lot of stuff in the past couple weeks for me to talk about because I've been doing a lot of stuff. And it's been fun and amazing and wonderful. And I will leave you guys there. So I hope you're having a really good March. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, please feel free to give it a thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't yet. Join the Ravelry group. Check me out on Instagram if you would like to. I would love to be your friend there. And uh, check out the Moonstone Dye Works shop if you're interested in either the colorways that I showed or anything else. There's a bunch of other yarn up in the shop at the moment. And have fun. Stay awesome. Bye.